guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're gonna to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. A lot of news again. Firstly, Barcelona are beginning to fall away in the Erling Holland race. Right now, Man City have offered an absolutely huge sum of money, and that is now convincing Erling Holland. Real Madrid is still in the race, but Barcelona cannot compete financially. And in the end, it looks like he will not be joining Barcelona this summer. But Barcelona will still be making some signings right now. Mazuari, Kese, and Christensen all a done deal all have reached verbal agreements with barcelona and now it's all about that final meeting to sign the contract but all three players are expected to join barcelona this summer we have some details about those deals as well what they'll be earning and also with players coming in players will have to leave otiti dest memphis and ricky Puch have all been rumored to leave barcelona alongside uzman Dembele. the question is who will leave and how much money will barcelona get and lastly finally 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 barcelona have done something they have reached an agreement with spotify to become the new sponsor of barcelona from next season we have some details and you know information about that but again Finally, Barcelona have done something, but before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes in this video. It would be very much appreciated. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news. Over the past 24 hours, the first player, of course, that we've been linked with is Erling Haaland, and there have been some huge advancements on his deal. Firstly, coming in from Sport 1 from Germany, they've come out saying that Barcelona are out of the race to sign Erling Haaland as things stands either Manchester City or Real Madrid will sign him now apparently Man City have offered a huge huge amount of money for Erling Haaland so much so that the executive internal advisor for Borussia Dortmund said when I saw Man City's offer for Haaland I passed out this is what we're competing with here we cannot match Man City's offer but apparently our offer is kind of close to Real Madrid but Real Madrid is still offering more money but apparently Man City have come in over the past few days and offered a huge amount of money and of course a very good sporting project as well but Ordiel from TV3 very very reliable he came out saying I don't rule out Erling Haaland to Barcelona quite yet because four days ago Xavi and Jordi Cruyff met with him Manchester City right now are the main candidate to sign him because they've offered a huge offer over the past few days so again Man City have offered huge money for Erling Haaland and that puts ahead right now in the race to sign him and lastly Romano came out saying that Barcelona cannot match Man City or even Real Madrid on the financial side they are leading the race and Barcelona tried convincing Holland with their project he has not decided his future yet but will do so considering many factors not only money and Barcelona are trying to convince Holland with Xavi and their project although the financial proposal is not the best Man City and Borussia Dortmund Man City and Real Madrid lead the race right now and Holland will make his decision based on several factors not only money so here's where we're at. Man City have offered something ridiculous to Erling Haaland that made the internal advisor of Bruce Dortmund pass out with the amount of money they've offered him. Rumored to be around 500 to 600,000 euros per week. Real Madrid are there with a decent offer as well. Barcelona with not that much money but with a great sporting project. It's not looking too good. All I can say is this. If he's not coming to Barcelona, he, we have to hope he goes to Man City. If he goes to Real Madrid and they get Mbappe, we are finished. We are absolutely finished. But I'm still a bit optimistic. I think Barcelona can still be in that race because I feel like for a fact that Barcelona have a better sporting product than Man City, but Man City are offering that more money that pushes them over the edge, in my opinion. I think it just came down to sporting projects. Barcelona would win. I think our project is much better than Real Madrid and it's on part of Man City. But with Pep leaving in a few years, I think that gives Barcelona the bit of the edge there but of course nowadays main factor Romano says not about money but it's going to be a main factor when your agent is being Rayola money will be a huge factor it won't be the deciding factor but it will be a huge factor so we'll wait and see but looking unlucky for Barcelona but again if he does not come to Barcelona let's hope he goes to Man City so with Barcelona falling short right now in the Erling Haaland race the question right now is who will be that plan B who will be that backup option to come in and be that marquee signing for Barcelona next season two main names on the table right now firstly is Mo Salah Cat Radio Chavi Campos has come out saying that Mohamed Salah is asking for around 17 million euros net to renew his contract Contract with Liverpool. In that case, he does not renew. Liverpool could sell Salah for around 40 million euros. Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Mo Salah is currently not planning for a move to Spain. He's not desperate to leave this summer and remains focused on Liverpool as of today. Contract renewal talks with Liverpool are not completely broken. It's up now to the English club to decide what to do next. So, Salah is asking for a lot of money, okay? If he's coming to Barcelona, he's probably going to ask for more. We cannot match what he wants. He wants around what we're offering Holland, 400, 500K a week. Maybe we're probably offering Holland maybe around 300, but 
if he's gonna come to Barcelona, he's gonna ask for that same money. He's not like, oh, I'm gonna go to Barcelona, I'm gonna ask for only 100k a week. That's not how it's gonna work. So, I think we'll have the same problem that we're having with with Holland with Mo Salah financially. It's gonna be difficult. Of course, his transfer fee will be much less than the 75 million euros of Erling Holland. But again, he's gonna ask for a bit. be, I'd say, a lot more on wages and you know, sign on bonuses. Of course, he is one of the best players in the world. So. I don't think it will happen. I think in the end, he'll probably stay with Liverpool or go to another team like, I don't know, Bayern Munich, Manchester United, something, someone who's willing to pay that money because I think right now Barcelona are not. So I have to wait and see. The next option, who is technically the plan C on paper, is Robert Lewandowski. Now, Han Atafirotov, who's a very, very reliable source in Germany and also with Holland as well, he came out saying that Robert Lewandowski, reportedly on Barcelona's radar, wants to leave Bayern Munich this summer. Juan Martin from Sport came out back in that statement saying that at Barcelona, there is a lot of optimism regarding Robert Lewandowski. He is a real option for the club this summer. Now hold on a bit. Lewandowski's priority is to stay at Bayern Munich. He has one year left on his contract and as of this current moment, as I'm uploading this video, Bayern Munich and Lewandowski have not started any talks over a contract renewal and that has upset Lewandowski. So right now, it's very, very clear. This summer, He's gonna sit down with them. If they don't wanna match his offer or don't even talk to him, he's gonna leave. If he leaves, will he come to Barcelona? I mean, on paper, that is a downgrade. He's been, you know, killing us over the past few years. Would I take him? I would on like a one or two year contract, but that's like, it's kinda like a bomb yang, right? We have other priorities and we can't get them. I would go for Lewandowski for one or two years, but to be honest, I think if he's leaving Bayern Munich, I see him going to PSG. Of course, Mbappe's going to leave. They're bringing that short-term replacement of Lewandowski with Messi and Neymar. One to two years with Messi, you know, has one year left on his contract next summer. Try to win the Champions League. I think he'll be more open and more likely to go to PSG than Barcelona. But Barcelona will be an option, so we'll have to wait and see. I think these two options right now, the plan B, of course, is Mo Salah. Plan C is Lewandowski for Erling Haaland. I think both these deals are complicated. But in the end, we have to look for that marquee signing to come in, bring up some money, and of course, bring Barcelona back on top. Now, another Premier League winger that Barcelona are really interested in is Rafinha, the Brazilian from Leeds. Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Barcelona are really interested in Rafinha and the player is more attracted by Barca. And of course, his agent is Deco. There is no negotiation with Leeds yet as the price will be dependent on whether they get relegated or not. Right now, it's looking like they will stay up. If they stay up, they're going to ask around 50 million euros. If they get relegated, his price will come down to around 15, 20. I think for 50, it's a bit too much, but if he gets relegated, oh my God, I would go for him. I think he's a fantastic player. As an Uzman Dembele replacement, I think it's great, of course. And Theod Ajax would be my number one option, but he would be my plan B, and I would happily take him. But I have to wait and see, though. It does depend a lot on if Leeds get relegated or not. Now, staying in the Premier League, Barcelona have also been linked with the midfielder from the Premier League very, very heavily, and it's come in from the best source in Barcelona right now, Gerard Romero. He came out saying that Barcelona are following Wolves midfielder Ruben Neves, a player was proposed by Jorge Mendes, but right now there is no urgency from the club to go and get the player. So apparently Barcelona are really interested in Ruben Neves, but again, he will be costing a lot of money and have Miguel came out saying that Barcelona are indeed interested in Ruben Neves, but the club now have officially ruled him out for this summer because he would be an expensive signing costing around 60 million euros. So again, Ruben Neves not coming to Barcelona, he's too expensive, but Barcelona do like the player. But a midfielder that Barcelona will be signing this summer is the AC Milan midfielder Franck Kesse. A verbal agreement with the player has been reached as a free agent deal this summer. Fabrizio Romano came out saying the offer made by Barcelona to Franck Kesse includes a salary of 6.5 million euros net per season, which of course, I think is around about 130K a week. Matteo Marito from Sky Sports came out saying that Franck Kesse is getting closer to Barcelona. There was new contacts between the two clubs yesterday and today, or the two players, sorry, yesterday and today, and the agreement is practically sealed. Only the signature is left and Xavi has approved of the signing and also spoke with the player as well to convince him to join Barcelona. Canacera came out saying that Franck Kessi will be a Barcelona player next season. He signed the contracts last night to join the club as a free agent. That last part there is not quite confirmed, but again, it's all looking good. Gerardo Romero came out saying that Franck Kessi to Barcelona is a done deal. Yesterday, the club closed the agreement with the midfielder, but of course, there's still some details left to be resolved. Also, Jordan Romero came out saying that his salary would actually be 4 million net per season, plus 2.5 in bonuses. So again, games played, assists, goals, all that stuff will be in that bonuses, but on paper, every single week, 
four million per season. Again, that's there. I think around about 95, 110,000 per week, something like that. And finally, Moses Malores and Samuel Mars of ESPN came out saying that Franck Kesse will be Barcelona's first signing for next season. The transfer is closed in the absence of making it official. The matter of commission has also been closed with Kesse's agent. Now, apparently, we've agreed 10 million euros in compensation for his agent, which apparently is not true we're hearing right now it's going to be like two or three million euros to the agent which of course is completely fine now you might be wondering what pushed this deal over the line gerard de Miro came out saying that chavi spoke with cassie of course but also yaya torre yaya torre of course both from ivory coast called from Kese and convinced him to join Barcelona and now from Kese's deal is on the verge of completion and he will be joining Barcelona as a free agent this summer. Now another free agent who is also on the verge of joining Barcelona as well is Nusir Mazuari from Ajax. Matteo Morito came out saying that Mazuari has chosen Barcelona. His salary will be around 5 million euros net per season. We are now entering the final stretch again. 5 million euros per season, about 100k a week or so depending on variables. Moses Malorenz and Samuel Marza from ESPN came out saying that Barcelona are working on the signing of Mazuari. The negotiations are well on track and are set to be reaching an agreement. Sport 1, of course reliable sources from Germany, came out saying that Barcelona are in pole position to sign Nuzir Mazuari. 5 year contract with 10 million euro gross per season which again results to 5 million euros, uh, 5 million euros per season. Bayern Munich are in contact with his agent but a transfer now seems more and more unlikely again we're beating Bayern Munich to another right back for Vince Germano came out saying that Barcelona's proposed to sign Mazzari as a free agent is around 4 million euros per season with add-ons the salary could reach around 5 million euros per season net and Bayern Munich are also in talks with his agent but Barcelona are confident in completing the signing soon Mazzari is really tempted by Barcelona who are in the race to sign him Bayern Munich are not ready to match Barcelona's offer as for now and Borussia Dortmund and AC Milan already accepted that he will be joining Barcelona. Now Mazzari, he played the other day against um, Benfica and Ajax in the Champions League. He came out after the match saying, I've not signed anything with Barcelona. If I did, I already, already made that announcement. But the deal right now is very, very close. So this leads me to believe that we're, this is the reason why I think we're still in the Erling Holland race. Because we're not going to be signing Mazzari, a third right back, without, you know, doing a favor for me and Rayola. It could be, you know, a favor for the future, like, oh, what's on your player now? In the future, when you have another, you know, superstar, take that into consideration. That could be the case. But then again, it is a great market opportunity for Barcelona, and we'll have to wait and see. I just realized I spelled his name there in the caption wrong, my bad. So again, Mazzuari and also Franck Kesse are on the verge of joining Barcelona as free agents this summer. Now you might be wondering, how was the Franck Kesse deal and Mazzuari deal closer to being completed than Christensen, which apparently was done a few weeks ago? I have no idea why, but in the end, Christensen will most likely join Barcelona this summer. Moises Malorens and Samuel Mars from ESPN came out saying that following the signing of Franck Kesse, which is practically done, everything indicates that Barcelona's next signing for the 2022-2023 season will be Andreas Christensen. And lastly, Golo Kamal saying that Andreas Christensen, Franck Kesse, and Mazuari will all arrive at Barcelona for free next season. I mean, we are taking over the free agent market. Keep your eyes again on Aspera Cueta. He's still deciding his future, but Christensen, Kesse, and Mazuari are all very, very close. Great reinforcements on free deals. All reportedly earning around 100k a week plus bonuses. Great deal for Barcelona. Let's hope we can get this deal done because, of course, remember what happened last summer with Wijnaldum. We agreed, and in the end, it flopped. Thank God it flopped, by the way, but that situation could still happen. Someone else can come in out of nowhere and try to agree a deal with the players. We have to sign these deals very, very soon. But again, verbal agreement has been reached with all three players, and they're all set to be joining Barcelona this summer. Now, a position in the team that Barcelona are willing to spend some actual money on is in the left back position according to Candacer Barcelona are looking for a left back to provide competition for Jordi Alba and the two main names on the table right now are Jose Gaia and Alejandro Balde Again, it all depends for me on Mazawari. Will this be moved to left back? You know, try to save some money if we get another opportunity. I think it all depends again if we get Erling Holland or not. If we go sign a marquee player, another striker, big name striker, for example, Lewandowski. Let's say we spend, you know, 75 million euros on Lewandowski, which we won't. Then it won't be that much money to spend on the left back. They'll save the rest of the money and move Des to left back. But if we don't sign a marquee player, we sign, you know, another striker for 40 million euros, we'll still have money left. And I think then the couple go look for a new left back. So I have to wait and see. Right now, Ronaldo's a bit ahead of Jose Guy because 
Jose got his very close to his contract renewal with Valencia. But again, Barcelona are looking for a new left back. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Quick fire fashion, I'm going to go through all of them. Firstly, is the Ricky Puch coming in from Helena Codes from Cope. She's come out saying that Ricky Puch gives himself a month now to decide his future, but leaves the door open to a departure from Barcelona. Sport came out saying the departure of Ricky Puch is extremely likely. Following the arrival of Franck Kesse, the 23-year-old is struggling to get minutes. Again, Ricky Puch has to leave this summer. I mean... Unless we get rid of Roberto set to leave pretty much, unless we sell another midfielder, surprisingly, I cannot see him staying. He needs minutes, he needs game time. Go out there on loan to a decent team and get some first team football. Of course, keep in mind he has one year left in his contract. So if he does go out on loan, most likely will extend his contract for one year and then he'll go out, or he could come back as a free agent. Who knows? But Ricky Poch most likely will leave the club this summer. Next up is Usman Dembele. Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Usman Dembele does not rule out his renewal at Barcelona quite yet. The club club makes him an offer he would be willing to listen but the club won't make that first move and if he leaves Barcelona Barcelona will have to find him a replacement as well so again Dembele most likely will leave Barcelona and we do have some big indications because the agent Musa Sissoko came out speaking in the media you will not believe what he said he was doing some promotion crap I don't know what he came out saying that Dembele is currently focused on helping Barcelona but the issue of him staying at the club is very complicated He's not going to stay. He's going to leave as a free agent. There is no way we're going to come close to his 800k a week demands plus 40 million euros in commission. Dembele will leave unless he sacks Musa Sissoko or unless he makes that first move saying, you know, go to Pajuan La Porta. I want to stay. Please make this deal happen. Talk to my agent. Uh, that's the only way. I think 99% he's out. Again, with him being on form, liking Chavi, liking the squad. A bad man's talking about him as well. There could, there's that, you know, 1% chance that there's like some hope, but very, very unlikely Dembele most likely will leave the club this summer. Staying in that forward position though, Memphis Depay has been rumored to leave as well. Gerard Romero came out saying that Barcelona have an offer from Tottenham Hotspur Spurs for Memphis Depay. Now, Romano came out denying this, saying that Tottenham Hotspur are not working on Memphis Depay's signature as of right now. They have not made any offers, but... But Gerard Romero has been on fire. He is for me the best source in Barcelona right now and in terms of Barcelona news I trust him more than Fabrizio Romano. So Barcelona there is an offer on the table from Tottenham Hotspur For me it depends on the fee I think it's again 20 million plus the club will probably sell him unless they don't get another you know marquee signing another striker coming in that for me would depend a lot on Memphis Depay, how he plays from now until the end of the season. If he performs well, the club will say, ooh, you know, he's a good player. We haven't brought anyone in. And then maybe they'll try to renew his contract. But again, he has one year left on his contract as well. That is a big problem right now with Memphis Depay. So we'll have to wait and see. But again, his future will be unclear from now until the end of the summer. Now, staying in that Dutch, you know, kind of, you know, group at the, at the club right now, of course, Dest is not Dutch, but he's part of that Dutch group, and we do have some rumors about Des. Sport 1 came out saying that Bayern Munich have several right backs on their radar, including one who could fall victim to the Mazuari move to Barcelona, Serginio Des. So Bayern Munich think that with you know, Barcelona getting Mazuari, Des could be available. Now we did beat you know, Bayern Munich to both signings, which is you know kind of a bit funny in my opinion, but again, with the left back position being uncertain, that's why I think that's the you know holding on to Des not leaving. Again, all depends on that marquee signing, man. What, what are we going to do with our money? Are we going to, you know, invest that into a left back and then we can sell Des? Are we going to go set Ben and all on the striker Then we don't have a backup for Jordi Alba? Then Des will move there. It all depends on that. So again, his future as well as Memphis Depay will be uncertain from now until the end of the season. So we'll have to, well, not in season until the end of the summer. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But one player who better freaking leave in the summer. If he does not leave, I'm going to lose my mind. It's Samuel Omtiti. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Samuel Omtiti is already looking for an exit from Barcelona. He helped Barcelona by lowering his salary and now Barcelona will help him finding a new club. Lyon could be one of the options but they have doubts regarding his knee condition. If Omtiti survives another summer at Barcelona man, I mean <sighs> we're stuck with him until 2026 unless we sell him of course but I mean, there's no way he can survive this summer. He's played one game this season. He's been fit from August until February until he broke his toe in training. He's been fit and he's played one game. If there's not more signals to leave the club, I don't know what is. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But again, Barcelona want to get rid of Umtiti this summer. And also Umtiti wants to look for a new club as well. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Just a quick update on Arujo. Gavi and also Denny Alves. Firstly on Arujo, Gerard Romero came out saying that Ronald Arujo has an offer from both Manchester United 
and Arsenal, United are offering around 8 million euros net per season, while Arsenal are offering 6 million euros net per season. Now, apparently, Barcelona are offering around 5 to 5.5, so less than Arsenal and United. And apparently, all the Manchester United legends, you know, Rio Ferdinand, Paul Scholes, they all want Araujo to go to Manchester United. I don't know, man. I think we have to renew him. We have to renew him. He, Besides his passing out from the back, he's a fantastic defender. The question is... Will he make that money sacrifice to stay at Barcelona or will he take that more money and go to United? We'll have to wait and see. It's going to be up to him. Will money Should money be a big factor? I would say so a little bit because you have Christensen coming in, earning, you know, six. And he's been here at the club since, you know, a few seasons now. I think he deserves that same amount as Christensen, in my opinion. I know some of you guys disagree in the comments, but we'll have to wait and see. Of course, money will be the main factor in this. I think in terms of sporting project, Barcelona beat United and Arsenal, no problem whatsoever. But Arujo wants to get paid and fair enough to him. And it's the same situation with Pablo Gabe. Gerard Romero came out saying that Gabe has received a proposal from Liverpool for around 6 million euro net per season. Why the hell are Liverpool offering a 17 year old kid 130k a week? Oh my god, man. This is what Barcelona are competing with. We have great players and then now there are other clubs that wouldn't pay more money than us. Apparently we're offering Gabby around 4 million net per season, which is like 75k a week plus bonuses, of course. Apparently, Gabby wants to stay at the club because they made that sacrifice for him. They want He wants to do the same as well. So I don't think Gabby will be a big problem, but again, no doubt he has big money offers somewhere else. So again, Semitor Arujo will have to wait and see what he decides. Will he decide the Spartan project, the city, the club, or will he leave for the money? We'll have to wait and see. And finally, on Denny Alves, Candice have come out saying that at Barcelona, there are some people who are not in favor of renewing Denny Alves. So some people in the boardroom, apparently. But... Does not matter. Do you know why? Because there's only two people's opinion that matter. Xavi and Juan Laporta, they both want to stay. So in the end, Danny Alves will stay. Let's now discuss some of the news starting Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Finally, finally. I mean, we did something. We actually did something. Official from the club, FC Barcelona and Spotify have reached an agreement for the front of the men's and the women's first team shirt for four years, starting from next season, the front of the training kit for three years, and they'll also have the title rights of the Camp Now. And the Camp Now's new official name is Spotify Camp Now. Finally, 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 this deal is over the line. Now we have to focus on CBC and Barca Studio. But finally, we have agreed with Spotify. Now, I want to mention one thing. Gerard Romero, so in the morning, we were hearing that all Barcelona, a few days ago when this deal was official, we were hearing in the morning that all Barcelona are sitting down with Spotify. They hope to reach an agreement, but it'll be difficult. I don't know where Gerard Romero said, oh, it's a done deal, and they're going to announce it tonight. And he was right. Gerard Romero right now, no doubt about it, in my opinion, is the best Barcelona source out there in the world right now. Some more details. Of course, the agreement approved and signed by the Barcelona board directors is subject to the ratification of the extraordinary delegate members assembly that will take place on April the 3rd through electronic voting procedures. So again, the members still have to approve this deal, which in the end, they most likely will. But again, not 100% a done deal. It's been official. It's been confirmed. But to make it official and, you know, over the line, the members have to vote in favor of it. Can the Serif come out saying that Barcelona will earn around 70 million euros per season from the Spotify deal for the next four years and then Barcelona will renegotiate the terms of the title race of the stadium later once the reconstruction in the S5 Barca is completed. So 70 million euros apparently it's 60 million for the front of the men and women's kit then like 5 million for the uh, training kit and then another 5 million for the title race. So they're paying for the Spotify camp, no, 5 million for four years, which to be honest, is a great deal for them. And then once Espai Barca is completed and we have the new stadium, they have to renegotiate with Barcelona to around 20 million euros for the next 15 years. So it's a great deal for Spotify, a great deal for Barcelona. I think both parties got what they wanted in the end. But again, the new stadium is now called Spotify Camp Now for at least the next four seasons. The question is, when that Spotify Barca is completed, will Spotify want to keep doing that deal and pay 20 million euros instead of 5 million euros? Now, Rack 1 have come out saying that Barcelona and Spotify have mutually agreed to have confidential clause by which the figures of the agreement will not be made public. And Barcelona's decision is that the agreement should be approved by the assembly without announcing the figures. So again, 70 million euros is a, is a rumor, right? we're hearing it could be 60 70 75 i've heard everything between i'd say 
55 and 75. I've heard every single number. So we don't know the numbers and Spotify and Barcelona have agreed not to, you know, announce those numbers. Usually they do, but they have not decided to do so. So the members will vote in the assembly, not knowing the exact numbers. But again, it's going to be around, I think, 60, 70 million euros, somewhere around there. And lastly, though, Rack One have come out saying that UNICEF will remain on Barcelona's shirt for at least another season. A new collaboration deal is expected to be negotiated next year, but there's already a preliminary agreement for this season. So again, UNICEF will still be on the kit. You'll have UNICEF, the name. At the front, you'll have Spotify. Same with the trading kit. We have the Spotify as well at the front. And now Barcelona have to look for a lead sponsor to replace Beko. We're still in search for that. Not really a priority right now. We're still trying to do the CBC deal in Barca Studio. Those are the two main objectives right now. But again, we still have to look for that lead sponsor as well. So we'll see what happens with that. But finally, Barcelona finished something. Spotify will be the new sponsor of Barcelona for at least the next four seasons. And now all the focus will turn to the CBC negotiations and also finalizing the sale of Barca Studio. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys an injury update on Ansu Fati. We've had some good news over the past few days. First, it coming in from Candice Air. They've come out saying in two weeks, Ansu Fati will be able to play some minutes. He's currently training in double sessions in Madrid and is currently in constant contact with Xavi. Ansu will return to Barcelona when he's closer to returning so apparently again he's out in Madrid doing his recovery when he's on the verge of coming back and playing on the pitch he would then return to Barcelona Helena Cordes from Cope came out saying the goal for Anzo Fati is to be back on April the 3rd against Sevilla after the international break things have been good so far and the player continues to work I'm telling you this right now he won't even be on the bench for Sevilla I do not see Anzo Fati coming back until May I'm being completely honest I think he could be on the bench maybe end of April, but the club are not going to take any risk whatsoever. And also Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that as well, saying Ansu Fati feels strong and eager to return, but no return date has been scheduled yet as he hasn't even trained with the group. Barcelona won't take any risk as it was considered a pillar of the project. They don't want another injury. No, Javi Miguel came out saying the same thing as well. No risk whatsoever will be taken with Ansu Fati until he's 500% ready. He will not touch the ball. He'll not come out and make an appearance for Barcelona. Again, I think end of April, we can see Ansu Fati on the bench and then maybe playing a lot more minutes in May. But you know, when they when she says here, uh, Sevilla, April 3rd, absolutely no chance. There is no way he'll be back by then. I'll tell you guys that right now. But again, while the way is here with Ansu Fati, he is recovering very well and hopefully he can make an appearance by the end of the season. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like and of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to know firstly about Erling Holland, who do you think he'll end up playing this summer? Secondly, your thoughts on Mazawari, Cassie and Christensen coming into Barcelona. Thirdly, who do you think will leave Barcelona and will where they go will Memphis go to Tottenham will Ricky Push go to Wolves what do you think about that and lastly your thoughts about the Spotify deal finally being agreed and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time on the channel take care and force the Barca <laughs>